Okay, hello. Sneakers for men. Essentially a uncool, on purpose, New Jack Swing tribute. Uh, if you'd like to look into New Jack Swing, you could consider the works of Keith Sweat and New Edition, for instance. Um, so, we start with the little scratch sample. All the scratching in here is uh, Yamaha CS1X um, one shot that it comes with the keyboard so the idea behind the scratching is that it is actually sampled scratching as opposed to really using normal scratching um, there's just something about the uh, statement of using a kind of fake version of uh, what you're trying to achieve on purpose that I enjoy um, <clears throat> sneakers for men the song title came from me um, scouring Amazon product categories for any kind of title um, the original title was Urban Techno which was kind of a, an attempt at being incredibly uncool uh, with, a, with an uncool song, <laughs> song title um, but I came across sneakers for men because it had this kind of sense of um, a metropolitan kind of skipping down the streets. Um, it has a, a certain sort of up-tempo uh, vibe that feels like walking with a skip to me. Um, and also there's a bit of a uh, interplay between the idea of sneakers for men and high heels. Uh, and this curious question that sneakers are generally for men and the idea that you wouldn't interpolate sneakers as sneakers for men is kind of funny. Um, all shoes are good on everyone. Let's all agree. Um, right, moving right along. The initial ideas for the song came from this little doohickey called Chord Space, which is a free um, MIDI generated keyboard. These look like they're arranged in a pretty strange way but these are the uh, Roman chord numbers and it is I think around jazz theory around tetra chords four note chords so you've got each Roman numeral chord and its substitutions um, for example for chord five and I'm slightly out of my depth here you have b7 and you also have f, f minor which are, are apparently the chord substitutions for chord five in any key so although in this key it would be flat the actual key ended up being more like A flat major, but anyway, as soon as you hear this stuff, you'll hear how this came out. So I would just sort of um, lay down a tempo track and just tap. And as you can see, uh, there are different um, different results for different chords uh, but it is a nice way of laying out chords when you don't understand chord theory um, from a sort of pianist perspective rather than more of a sort of geometrical um, perspective it's a free plugin that I think only runs in 32-bit windows hence why I'm still running in 32-bit windows but one of those little sort of machine assisted type um, MIDI generators that I've used a lot on a lot of records um, in addition to a few others but yeah this kind of like in, interrupting a kind of keyboard workflow with the strange diagram so we have a new jack swing beat we have an intentionally uncool um, set of sounds uh, we're trying to be uncool on purpose uh, but sort of being lighthearted and sincere about it at the same time um, hence we've got this upright bass which sounds quote unquote cool to me uh, the original song was laid up against a breakbeat which I'll unmute in a second when it comes up so this breakbeat is not included in the stems because I don't know whether it's my intellectual property or not I don't know where it came from it was on a um, it was on a uh, breakbeat pack that I got off the early internet, so here we are. Anyway, we'll, we'll, the idea is that we're using breakbeat architecture and uh, a kind of uh, a looped recording as a kind of basis for the rhythms um, and then writing something else with one shots later. So the idea is that this is an audio clip. We can scrub it.
but these ones are sort of the same idea of the beat, but just done with one shots. So this is the drum sampler. And as always, using the hi-hat to kind of push, um, push the rhythm at the end of the bars with this kind of broken up hi-hat. We'll mute the break beat again because that's no longer relevant. Uh, Two types of transition things I would like to show you all, and that would be this one, Sweet Tines, which is a, a like an electric piano. It sounds more like a harp. Um, as that's panning left to right, that's actually going through, if I'm not wrong, it's going into, yeah, it's going into a reverb send, which is panning off in the opposite direction. So this other line of automation down here is actually the effect send for this transition and I would have moved it in there if later on you know working working on later records I would have put that right next to it up here but we'll keep it where it was just for for wholeness's sake um, so anyway the the Tyne Gliss runs from uh, the left channel to the right channel but the reverb scene runs from the right to the left so you have this kind of rotating effect where the sound moves into one ear and then the after sound moves into the other ear which you don't really hear in the mix and have made it sort of not obvious and not direct with the exact timing of the sort of delayed out any time it moves it moves semi opposite but just not being too um, rigid about the I'm not trying to show off I'm just trying to make space with this um, the other transition element that we can have a look at is the preverbs. So it's this audio track here. So that's just the um, sets of bells. The first note of the sets of bells being sort of this A sharp and this A sharp. They run through reverb, a single note hit, and then that's reversed so that you have a reverse echo. And hello to the cars honking outside in beautiful dusky Kowloon. Okay. So you've got this build of energy where it sort of feels like this thing's coming out of nowhere and then slams on that first note dry. So it's, it's sort of a sort of a wetness kind of echo that comes back to like bam you're on you're on this melody and this kind of uncool thing this whole this whole melody section is just kind of painting by numbers we're just trying to be uh, just trying to go with it here nothing too Engaging, and then there's that glissando from the sweet tines. This whole section is about giving the listener a bit of space before the uh, more complicated bits happen. Same preview. I like how this tune just kind of rolls along. It doesn't sort of surprise the listener yet. There's nothing too, nothing too mega about any of the um, any of the sections. Um, there's quite a nice little pairing of bell sounds between the left and right channels. I will always do this um, if I make a sort of bell sound. I'll, I'll duplicate. I'm I'm pretty sure this water bell's left was duplicated to make harmo bell on the right. So you basically duplicate the track change the change the preset change the patch and then pan them left and right so you get a kind of wide sound but 
But that's all kind of background detail. We let everything just be driven by the chord progression and the main melodies. Uh, nothing too, nothing too flashy. In terms of a key, I think it's an A flat major ish. But there are a lot of minor chords. But what I don't um, ever really do is, is minor key music, and it's that's kind of capital S sad. It ends up being more kind of opulent and rich, rather than sort of sad. Um, it's a funny dichotomy between major happy minor sad. I don't really prescribe to it I've always sort of written in modes and stuff so I always tend to sort of go halfway between on a minor key but this kind of yeah, C minor 7 D minor 7 C G minor 7 A flat major 7 so you're hitting the major on the last the last um, chord and this one is just a uh, pretty sure it's just an inversion of this um, first section this is the same chord progression but the um the notes have just been moved around a bit yeah something like that so so what i would do and i still do a lot is take a take a chord progression that sort of runs this kind of goes down then up just keep inverting it till it's a climb And you get little weird intervals that you've got to deal with, but you get the idea. Um, what else can we say about this funny little tune? Left and right. Um, off beats. Always go to the off beats. It's something I always do that I sort of bit. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit eyeliner being eyeliner. Um, these are bust out hard left and hard right into a into a track called wide M e piano and then we thin up the track using the the allocation left and right buses so it goes in it goes in hard left hard right and then the, the group track is used to to set the wideness of that bus it's much easier easier than trying to dial in something goes left 40 right 40 left 60 right 60 you just go hard left hard right and then you use another group channel to change the width of it afterwards. I try to find this, there's this one bass note that I really like that I haven't done much else. Ah, here it is. Um, nope, it's not that bar, it's bar 14, yes, yes this, we have this little 1 16th, is it even a 16th, is it a 32th, this tiny stutter note that I, I've only just realised I'm doing that quite on purpose, that it, it crashes again. To sort of double accent the one, I really like that, um, and I'll be using that again for future records. So, thank you, National Libraries, for making me look. Because yeah, it, it felt a bit a bit too smooth. There wasn't enough skip in that um, in this part, but with this kind of double slam, it makes it a little more, a bit more unpredictable. But not too unpredictable. Alright. We can look at the ending now. These little percussion bits, if, as, if I see a space, I'll chuck something in there and try to be as sort of um, fun loving as I can. Um, it's got the, the weird little side stick, wherever that is. Roto toms, love roto toms. There's a side stick in the actual main percussion track here.
and then a typical kind of ending where we let it sort of fall apart just mute sections mark off time slowly with the kick drum roto toms little transition effect then this bell now that bell at the end is for Daft Punk's aerodynamic I realized when this bell from this um, Omnisphere patch very quiet in the mix very quiet in velocity until the end I think we just have to just have a little zoomy looky yeah it doesn't really start kicking in until the last few bars of the whole piece um, I just noticed that when I had this last chord, it sounded a lot like the end of um, Aerodynamic by Daft Punk. And I was like, leave that one in. That's a good song. Um, the loose sections at the end, there are a lot of there are a lot of ideas here. Hopefully they'll be in the right tempo map. We're starting on the right bars. Yeah, we're looking okay. If I'm off time, the shuffle won't work and it'll sound, it'll sound completely discombobulated. <laughs> So this was uh, this is slow off beats. This is too slow. Then this so typical eyeliner stuff, you get the chord progression, you arpeggiate it. I like the two sections of these two chords. This could have been a little middle eight in there, but I felt like the tune was sort of busy enough or it sort of needed to roll along on its own steam without being that interrupted. I don't know what this one is coming up, but we'll... I think this is the working section for that, for that middle eight tight part there's the double note but that hasn't it hasn't made it onto the slap bass which is this this track below yeah this is me just trying to work out that climb and what do we land to yeah this is a more questioning type version of that bell sound too questioning too like what are you doing This is, uh, I think I was, yeah, I was trying to figure out the, um, the melody that was coming, we can figure out. Yeah, this, that became this section, this part. This dum 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 dum, what just started out as being a kind of sort of phantom. Now we were this part. So that, that whole section that I played previously that made it into the into the song um, started with this kind of question and answer answer. It's more more it's it's more of an answer on its own. It's an answer without a question. This would have been figuring out that second section. Ah, uh, yeah. Trying variations on. Trying to take this one part, the loops, and building another section onto it. Didn't work. And I believe this is the first part was this walking bass line so it may have been the case that I came up with this walking bass line type um, thing and then I I grabbed a key um, the implied musical key from this bass line into chord space and then made the chord structure uh, 
that's basically sneakers for men oh additional trivia there is a vaporwave artist called haircuts for men that i didn't know about and if i knew about them i would have not used it as a song because it is too close to their work um but here we are so sorry if i missed you um <laughs> sneakers for men <laughs> 